Hey there, uh, my name is Samya Mukherjee and uh, I head product at apti.io. Uh, we are in a digital adoption space and uh, I will talk about more of the things in, in, in our uh, in this particular session. But first of all, I would like to welcome all of you to the OpenJS World 2021 conference and hope you all are doing fantastically well and hope your loved ones are healthy during this pandemic. I hope you are having a great time listening to all these great speakers that we have today. And uh, and I'm sure that you know everyone is so fantastic. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and see uh, what I have. Uh, first of all, I would like the organizers to giving me the op for giving me the opportunity to speak in this conference. Uh, today I'm going to speak on a topic uh, which is how we can wrap WebDriver IO and create your own framework. When I started with this tool, I faced a lot of issues. Uh, getting started with the PUC as they are aware, there was less documentation, mostly to customize things and write things over top of the framework. Another challenge was that nobody was discussing use case around this tool and everyone was only discussing their issues in the channel and of which only a handful will answer uh, my queries. Another challenge was that anyone whom I have asked about using this tool, everybody preferred to use either Cypress or Protractor and not WebDriver IO. And uh, yeah, I got pumped up and, and you know, took it as a challenge as I know for sure that this is going to be very, very simple, uh, but being portrayed as very complex. And I'm sure that I will work with this tool and uh, will also start contributing to the documentation in future on this tool uh, and, and, and talk about various topics like how to create a framework, uh, you know, how to do the, your framework development on this tool and talk about integrations, customizations uh, and what all and what not. Uh, just to give you a background how I started with uh, this the PUC that when I joined my organization, uh, we had a challenge uh, because we had uh, three set of applications. One is on the Electron. Uh, it's an Electron based app. Second one was the uh, a React web app and the other one was browser extensions. Now, this is not uh, uh, this is not this is a unique composition that uh, this company has uh, and it was quite tedious and challenging for us to automate. So I was looking at uh, a simple alternative, uh, you know, of this, uh, of a tool, you know, who can, who I can leverage and, and, and automate all the three sets. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the agenda. Uh, we'll talk about, I'll talk about, you know, why I chose WebDriver over other tools. Uh, this is because that people should know that what are the intentions behind this, uh, behind choosing this tool and why we should use this particular tool. Second, I will talk about a shapeable framework wrapper, which uh, I have created over WebDriver IO. And you would see that how simple WebDriver IO tool is that it gives you so much flexibility to work with and, and how easily we could have built this particular framework for our company. Uh, uh, last but not the least, I will, will show a demo where I will go through some code snippets and we'll talk about uh, uh, I, I will run a use case uh, and then it's an alive use case on my uh, on my company's app as to how uh, we are automating the things. All right. Um, okay. So now let's see how, why I have actually chosen this tool and why I'm saying that this tool is so flexible and easy to use and quite also quite flexible on customizations, etc. Uh, if you get a little guidance, which you can get from the current documentation, you will be able to easily uh, work with this particular tool. Um, in this talk, I will talk about things that we have done to make this tool flexible in the usage for us, especially across browser extensions, the React web app, and also an Electron JS app. Uh, I'll also talk about how our wrapper, uh, which is uh, 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 how is our wrapper structured? Uh, how is our pipeline looks like? Uh, uh, we will also push, uh, we'll also push it to the standard documentation at the end of this particular conference, uh, so that people can go ahead and, and look into the customizations that, we, that we have done and we have contributed to WebDriver IO. And, uh, on June 2nd, while you are listening to this particular, uh, cast, you would, basically also see that 
uh, this 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 is being uh, open sourced as well so that people can go and try use to use this wrapper you know and and see how flexible it is to work with uh, web io all right um, all right so why why i chose web or other tools is one of the things that we had to look is is that our developers and our technology is based on javascript so our de native development technology is in javascript so we wanted a tool which can support this particular thing and as a best practice in automation uh, you know we always need to merge our automation code uh, in the dev branch uh, you know so that you can build your code along with uh, uh, along with the test code and then those tests can be triggered uh, so most of the companies i have seen is that they will create their framework in some different technology and the basic technology is something different and then there it's not much flexibility that you can merge them together and run it as a package kind of a thing but but we did, do not want to make that mistake the second thing is that uh, why we chose webdriver io is uh, is because that our main component our is is, is it the desktop app is based on electron js and uh, we used uh, a framework called spectron which is written over uh, webdriver io and uh, since these two goes hand in hand and, and with fantastic integrations in place we could basically achieve the electron js automation as well um, also uh, we wanted our developers to write our tests in future and that is uh, also a uh, 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 that is also a, a requirement that we may have in the future wherein the developers can also write and contribute to this javascript uh, since it is based on javascript uh, third thing is that you know we extensively use react js and angular core libraries and that is where uh, uh, we would need some tool to basically uh, help us uh, one more thing which is uh, which is important for us is to achieve end to end automation uh, because as I said that uh, we have Electron JS and React Web and we also have browser extensions so we want to run end-to-end -end, uh, test cases and we wanted one tool one single tool which can support all this uh, <clears throat> so this is why we have chose WebDriver IO uh, we majorly use Core, React and Angular components as I already said and, and that is why uh, we, we wanted to uh, use the WebDriver IO um if we go next okay uh we want some tool which can seamlessly have integrations with the reporting tools cross browser on demand platforms and uh, various others so if if you look at webdriver ios architecture uh, it is mostly service based or plugin based i would say uh, when you can just hook in a plugin and you'll get get to go uh, nothing uh, fancy it's very easy to use and 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 since that drivo is web driver io is based on plugins and each component is a plugin which makes it extremely flexible uh, we also want a tool uh, to basically uh, which can run on web driver io web driver protocol uh, why is that so because web driver is evolving and we don't want to use a tool which can say after a year that we are uh, a, we are end of life cycle like for an example protractor now whoever was using protractor has now maybe in fix what to do and how we can migrate and what all and what not so we want to use a tool which can be driven on the web driver protocol and supports it uh, the final uh, aspects that we have thought about is that the tool needs to be fast and we have seen this it's extremely fast uh, it should be free to use it's not like any other tool in the market like cypress who has got a licensing over the things and it needs to be truly truly uh, open source uh, you know and and that's our philosophy because we also work with open source and contribute to open source and uh, since the philosophy matches with the creator of this tool you know we have chosen this the last not but the lot not the least you know it's extremely customizable i would say okay um 
if we go next, uh, I'll talk about the shippable framework wrapper that we have. Um, why do we say that, you know, uh, we want a shippable wrapper? Most of the frameworks in the world are so tightly coupled that each team writes their own framework for their project, which makes it difficult to unify and, and run the end-to-end -end test. And this has happened in, in, in a lot of consulting that I have done is that, you know, every team has their own framework and at the end they have a common problem how to integrate and run it as end-to-end. We also want consistency in what we do at Apti and hence we split the framework into two components which is a shippable based framework that means any project that we start here uh, can uh, can can basically consume the shippable based, uh, based framework and then can implement uh, their project related stuff. Uh, so. Uh, which can later be consumed by any implementation project and can there be only minimalistic changes that are required for that project implementation perspective. We have a team who basically uh, contribute to the shippable based framework. So we keep on writing our libraries and everything. So the shippable based framework consists of an engine. So that engine is responsible to gather the configurations, understand what spec to run, which environment, what browser versions, what uh, cloud platform, uh, whether it is device, whether it is web. So all sort of permutation combination that engine would decide. So that's basically a runner. Secondly, uh, there are base configurations which are being stored in an YAML file. Uh, that means uh, like for an example, uh, a simple example would be, uh, would be uh, uh, delay. Right. So across the framework, how much is the delay and then you can override it in your implementation and you can, you can see, uh, you know, how much do you, do you want? Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, the shippable based framework has got all the integrations in place. That means it has integrations to central centralized logging, which we do it in Elasticsearch. Uh, and then we have, we have standard reporting, uh, which is also centralized. And we basically uh, sends all our data to Kafka uh, queue and then later on a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, report generates and, and we keep centralizing our data each time because we run our ML models. And so we'll, in, in, in the future slides, uh, I'll show what we do. Uh, and the finally, uh, in the space shippable framework, what we have is the brace framework library, which is nothing but your getters, setters, uh, your selects, your, uh, sets and everything so all those standard functions which are which always needs to be should be present in the shipable framework we also have a feature wherein we can uh, do auto healing all those things also sits in the base framework library uh, what goes into the project implementation is is the pro it's the team who is consuming the shipable based framework they just have to create their tests uh, they need to run, they need to create their own business libraries and they need to also make those customized uh, custom configurations, which is nothing but uh, environment, uh, browsers, versions, uh, specs and what all uh, and, and cloud platforms and etc. Let's talk about the framework wrapper stack uh, and why is this important? Uh, so engine is nothing but an integrator or an orchestrator. Uh, the engine responsibility is to drive the test by looking into the base configurations and then go through the custom configurations and uh, plug in the right set of plugins in the test execution process. Uh, it is the one which will make sure whatever you have written in the custom configurations, it will take care of. Uh, it will initialize the webdriver config file and then instruct uh, it to execute. Uh, this in turn runs the automation pack. The spec then use the base framework libraries to call the reusable uh, methods, which are common throughout the framework and also call the business libraries, which consist of the application flows uh, and the logic pertaining to the application. So we define different components uh, in the business libraries and then we call those components into, into our automation script. So all those dark ones here are all uh, shippable uh, framework components. Uh, the blue ones are all the project implementations. Uh, we use to test framework, uh, the favorites WebDriver, Ivan, Spectron, 
and then uh, application under test, test components are the browsers and the uh, electron app but interestingly we have extensions and we have an injected script um, and you will see in my particular screen uh, you know when when the things would pop up that how the extensions are being loaded and all so web browser io and spectron is an underlying tool integrated in the same framework to support automation on browsers and electron app and uh, uh, here through web browser extensions uh, uh, which are installed uh, on the go uh, and seamlessly as well javascript is injected uh, in the application you know under test uh, unfortunately i uh, cannot show it running on the live environment but i will discuss about how the customizations are done with web driver io uh, going forward in the demo and run through the sample report execution executed against the live product uh, i will also execute the framework uh, uh, on the the live application that we have and to make you understand how the configurations can be made and the automations can be achieved <clears throat> okay now uh just wanted to go through our execution pipeline so that you <clears throat> have an understanding of what we do in apti uh, let's quickly talk about how the execution pipeline looks like uh, we have git github actions uh, as a primary ci tool and uh, you know as a pull request is machine master the pipeline gets triggered uh, the code is then instrumented and deployed uh, why we want to do this because we want to have code coverage at the end of each run because that goes into our ml models and 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 valuable information comes out we always make sure that uh, when we run our test on a clean environment uh, uh, as always the data issues are really really painful to fix uh, we wanted to have a clean environment so while we do deployment we the next step is that we we load our master data and then uh, you know uh, attach and 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 then the engine gets attached with the configurations and the specs uh, the engine knows what to pick up and where to put and what to run uh, but key here is that we always run it on the clean environment so that we are absolutely sure that the issues that are coming are with respect to the scripts or with respect to the uh, uh, or with respect to to the environment and what all and what not. Uh, the tests are then executed across uh, various browser versions, platforms, multiple browser extensions. Uh, we have our auto healer, uh, which can understand about failures pertaining to the objects and auto heal the scripts in real time. Uh, so that's a small caveat there and <clears throat> then uh, the results are logged uh, and then pushed into a centralized location uh, and we basically extensively mine uh, our results uh, we specifically pick up the data of results and logs and pass it through the ml model to tag the most important tests that are executed for the build uh, do predictive analytics uh, to fetch and perform analysis on the runs and failure results we also determine if the builds are stable enough to continue testing on the same uh, the logs uh, from both environments and 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 the production is then correlated to identify new tests uh, and on the basis of test runs the ci is then continued or being stopped to do further running of the pipeline so ml model has got huge influence of what we do and uh, and and based on the decision being made by the the algorithm we basically mark our build green amber and red and 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 believe me uh, we are 96 percent accurate uh, on what we do right now in our automation uh having said that uh we have very less time so let's quickly jump up to the demo uh let me quickly share my uh studio uh, let me quickly show you what we have so so this is the this is the framework project and if you look at it we have apti framework uh, which is nothing but the the shippable wrapper that's that's what i was uh, telling you uh, you can see hello report here why is because i executed in local uh, but but actually it's get centralized so we have library here which is a base library which is nothing but our uh, uh, the, the custom uh, functions or the reusable functions which we we call it in our uh, in all in in our scripts uh, we have props uh, which uh, are with which basically holds our credentials and and some framework related 
properties um, we have uh, source so what we do is we basically define all our components uh, uh, in, in, in the separate file and then uh, we have uh, configurations now what we have done is we have split these configurations into two part uh, one being uh, the application level configurations and one is a framework level configuration these are uh, project level if you look at it uh, you would basically see that uh, we have got uh, the configurations and uh, what we have seen is that we have uh, we have basically defined different variables here so what our master script does master scripts uh, looks into this particular file first and see whether they need to open up an extension whether what environment to run uh, whether they need to run it on local or lambda test or browser stack or local or in any of the cloud platform um, and then uh, uh, this, so, and then you know the run configurations which is nothing but uh, what platform what version uh, uh, what browser you need to run and then what spec to run uh, what sort the base URLs uh, that we have and then the extensions that are being will be used okay uh, uh, we'll not run it on lambda test right now or source labs uh, but but this is just a demo, for the demo purpose. Um, interesting. So now we have extensions uh, which holds extensions for us. We have a project library, uh, and this project library consists of our business functions. Uh, we have pages uh, which holds our objects, uh, and then we have specs uh, which is our uh, cases. Uh, so what we do is we basically write our cases uh, which basically calls our components and then which calls our the pages uh, for the objects and, and likewise so now anyone who is actually implementing our base uh, shippable framework they just need to create a source directory and all those things and and that's about it and and then it is seamlessly can connect with the apt framework or the shippable framework uh, we have an apt master file uh, this is what is the master file that i was talking about and this is uh, basically uh, that it will read through uh, the config file here okay and uh, create a configurations file which can later merge with the webdriver uh, con.js file so if i go to the apt master you would see that we have written a merge feature here which can basically take the webdriver io config and then merge it with our uh, configurations which we have set above and read through our uh, config file um, and obviously these are different runners that we have used and and likewise so we have browser stack lambda test and source labs um, we also have uh, this webdriver io config which is a base configurations we just have some hooks written here which is after test and and you know after suite suite uh, wherein what we do is we basically picks up the results and push everything up uh, in the in the uh, in the backend uh, for an analysis uh, so this is very clean this is there is nothing in it but what we do is since webdriver io only understand this particular file we basically create our own configurations uh, and then merge it with this particular file and then execute it. So that's how we basically wrapped uh, WebDriver IO configurations with our configurations, which are custom configurations. So when you would uh, start using this, you can create your own uh, set of uh, attributes and the, the master script will take it over from there. Okay, so this is uh, our project structure. Uh, let me uh, quickly run, run, run it for you. Okay. Um, so i'll just uh, put a command here the site uh, so it started executing uh, and this would basically basically create this will open up uh, the browser for us 
and you would see here there is a small icon here uh, which is nothing but an extension and here the extension is being loaded this is apt is apt client and now it is running some tests so let's wait for some time uh, it will just take uh, some few seconds now so it's done it's going for the second one second test So it's passed and now uh, what what would have happened is uh, it would have pushed in all our uh, results into the backend uh, but uh, so it's generating the results uh, and, and I've, I'm, I'm running this on local and that is the reason I can't uh, show you the backend uh, because of our IP um, so, so once uh, the report is done, uh, we we then analyze and then our machine learning model takes care. Now, uh, coming back to the particular framework, uh, if you see, uh, it's quite clean. Uh, it's easy uh, to use. And uh, if I go to package.json, and one of the things that I that I wanted to show is uh, these are all the dependencies. So what you do is you just need to do an npm install. It install all the uh, packages that are required and that's about it and if you look at it uh, these are individual services that we are using and uh, uh, and how easy it is like you know if if i want to now use uh, uh, a service uh, of webdriver i would just need to hook into package sources and that's about it and then and then then put it into our uh, onto our framework so this is what i have uh, for today and uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to to speak in the open js uh, con uh, conference and and uh, if you guys have any questions uh, going forward uh, please uh, feel free to reach me on my twitter and linkedin and i'll be very happy to to, to answer all your queries and, and please try this particular shippable wrapper and do let us know your feedback. Uh, thank you very much and uh, please be safe uh, in this pandemic. Uh, all the best. Bye.